How's it going everyone? You're watching the Green Dream Project. Now if you're new here, Jess and I, we are building our own earth bag home off grid here in the Arizona desert. And we got to protect our dome from some of the harshest weather we get out here. Yeah, the rainy season can be brutal sometimes. And especially in the past several weeks, we've been seeing a lot of really strong storms coming through. There have been like multiple severe thunderstorm warnings, flood warnings. Tornado warnings, which is crazy. Tornadoes usually aren't a thing here. But I mean, just in the area, there have been like electric poles that have been ripped out of the ground and kind of some crazy damage. And we've suffered some pretty crazy damage right here as well. You know, building an earth bag dome like this, we don't have a traditional roof. So we don't have a roof to kind of protect plasters or anything like that that we wouldn't, that you might normally see on a natural earthen home. So whatever plasters we use, it really has to withstand the brunt of some of the harshest elements that we get out here. And that includes the direct harsh desert sun, gets crazy hot and the UV radiation is crazy off the charts, but also uh, some crazy wind and some crazy rain. In some ways, I kind of like that it's not a conventional roof. The building can withstand a lot of really harsh weather. Luckily, if we get those crazy winds, even a tornado, it's not gonna tear our roof off because there's no traditional roof to sort of lift up and off. It's just that that facade, the exterior, it needs to be strong. It has to be strong, yeah. So like we were saying, we had our own crazy heavy storms here recently, and we are not without a bit of damage to some of the things around here. Yeah, I think one of our recent storms was like an inch and a half, and that came down in a short amount of time. Uh, There's like driving rain just kind of pounding against the walls. So we did see some damage, and we can show you just what that damage looks like, what held up and what didn't hold up. So let's take you around, let's show you some of the damage that we got. Then we'll show you what's been working really well, especially in our climate. So first let's take a look at what probably suffered the most damage. And that was just this cob, which is just a mix of earth and straw. You can see our exposed earth bags right here. So that layer of cob just kind of fell off. There was a lot of water concentrated on this one area and it was hit with a lot of rain. So that cob just kind of melted and peeled off. I'll point out that actually a lot of our cob really has held up really well to uh, a lot of the rains that we've been getting. I think like a lot of this cob we put on last last monsoon so it's seen a lot of weather so i think like the thicker you make uh, your batches the more it can hold up to but like as time goes on as it gets hit by that rain it's gonna slowly chew it down eat away at it and then eventually it'll get thin enough where hunks will fall off so obviously cob by itself isn't going to hold up unless it's like super thick. Yeah. But at a given time, it's just going to wear down. But it gives, it goes to show you how even a simple mix of earth and straw can hold up to some pretty severe weather. Yeah, obviously things thinned out here and this will have to get covered sooner rather than later. So the break, bags aren't breaking down, but uh, overall pretty good. All right, where are we going to take them to next? Let's show our experimental wall where we were trying out some different plaster mixes and we can see how that held up. All right. This is the bench that we made out of earth bags and then we covered it with cob and some different plaster mixes. I wanna show you how some of the plaster mixes held up really well and some not so well. We put on some cob on this wall and then over that we put a lime wash which was just some natural hydraulic lime mixed with water and I think we put a little bit of linseed oil in there and you can see it's flaking off pretty badly. It was able to handle some rain but when we got the really hard driving rain it started flaking off. Towards the middle of this bench we tried some lime plaster with uh, there's sand 
the natural hydraulic lime and I think we mixed some other things in there like eggshells and some fur for fiber and a little bit of chopped straw too. Then over that we put our lime wash. This is held up really well. It looks pretty much the same as right after we applied it. Yeah, and again, this would have been hit by some pretty strong rains. All right, so uh, let's head up to the uh, top of the dome. Let's show you what's going on there. Definitely some action, some things falling apart up there, but we gotta show you how the lion plaster is working up there. We have just our regular cob mix up there, and then we have some lime plaster at the very top. So let's take a look at that. We're actually standing on our eaves in the sort of uh, gutter that we made. Again here, some cob is coming off the wall and our earth bags are exposed. So there's a little bit of damage um, now. Let's take a look at the very top of the dome where we have the lime plaster. Hey, how you doing all the way up there? Hey. <laughs> we do this on the regular, but the view is nice. All right, we're up here, almost 20 feet up in there. The tippy top of the dome, which should be seeing the most weather exposure. What I'm seeing is that plaster looks like it's holding up really well. I don't see anything chipping off, melting or anything like that, or I don't see any cracks even, which is really good. That's a really good sign. Like any of the cement stuff we've done, there's always some cracking with cement. Yes, always. You can see we've embedded some rocks in there. All the rocks are right in place where we put them. Nothing's really moved, nothing's changed since we plastered it. So I'm really pleased about that. And that's pretty impressive for an area where it's just been really assaulted with a lot of rain, wind, sun. It's our snow-capped mountain. Yeah. So obviously this plaster has held up really well. What's been the key to your success? Well, I can go through what I put in and how I did it. One really important ingredient in here is a natural hydraulic lime. That has kind of cement-like qualities to it. It hardens everything and it makes it weather resistant. And there's a difference between the natural hydraulic lime versus the stuff you're going to find in your big box stores. Uh, it's just not going to be as strong as the natural hydraulic lime. You're going to pay a little bit more, but honestly, it might be worth it. Yeah, if it holds up and you don't have to keep reapplying, uh, it could totally be worth it. And the particular kind of natural hydraulic lime that we use, it comes in different grades, uh, different strengths. We used the number two, which is, I guess, the weakest strength as far as compressive strength, but it's the most appropriate for our use, which is over an earthen material. When we were first looking into the strengths, uh, you kind of maybe naturally assume the stronger, the better. Right. Let's just get the stronger, the better. But that's not, the, that's not really what you want in this case. Since the earth is going to be a little more flexible, like contracting and expanding, that's an important key for plaster, keeping in mind you want it flexible. If it's too rigid, you run the risk of having cracks, and when you have cracks, water can get in, and if it gets behind the plaster, then it's over. It Game over. Fall off. Game over, man. One cool thing about the lime is that it's a little more breathable. It allows water vapor to be released so it doesn't trap that water inside the wall, which can be bad. Another cool thing about lime is that it self-heals to some degree, so it, over time it will continue to uh, have a carbonization and um, any cracks can kind of be filled in. So, you know, if you do get any small cracks in there, that really helps to keep the whole thing intact. So I take the lime, I mix it with water and then it, you need an aggregate. I use eggshells for the top of the dome and that kind of mimics sand. I was kind of surprised at how well that held up. I suspect that sand would be stronger than eggshells, 
but the eggshells did seem to work fine. I used a one part lime to two parts aggregate, which would be either the eggshells or the sand. And we did also add linseed oil. It was raw linseed oil, but we heated it up slightly. Heating it is important because it helps it disperse in your mix. I think for like a two to three gallon mix, you want about a tablespoon of the linseed oil if you use that. And that adds a little more weatherproofing to it. You don't want to add too much because that will reduce the vapor permeability and it also might contribute to it, things like not adhering as well, so it might like start peeling off. Fiber can really help a plaster. So we added some dog fur and what the fibers do is it kind of holds things together, prevents cracking. I kind of just went by the look to see if there is like a decent amount of fur in that. You can scoop some into a trowel and lift it up. You can see the fur kind of sticking out the edges of the trowel. So when you get a lot of fur sticking out, that's a, a good sign that you have enough fur in there. You also want to make sure that you mix that fur in really well so that there's not clumps. Now, let's say people don't have access to as much dog fur as we have. Are there any substitutes that people can use instead of dog fur? There's other animal hairs you can use. You just don't want it to be like really smooth hairs. It shouldn't be like too wiry. Like horse hair has been used, like the hairs from a horse's body. The hair should be around an inch to three inches, I think. I've also heard of using chopped straw, which we did try using. And it's held up really well. With this hydraulic lime, when you mix the water in, it starts to set. So as soon as I mix, make my mix, I'll apply it. That's the mix that we've used and it's worked out really well for us, you know, thus far. But we are going to be actually making some changes to our plaster. Not too much, right? Uh, we're just basically substituting the sand for the eggshells? Yeah, so we, we ran out of eggshells pretty quick because it's hard to get, you know, a ton of eggshells. So we will probably be using more sand for the rest of our dome. Putting in the sand versus the eggshells, I think it's gonna make it stronger. So that should be even less worries than the plaster with the eggshells. And I think we should also do a lime wash over the plaster. With the natural hydraulic lime and with the sand, it's gonna actually take on more of the color of the sand. It's not gonna be as white when it plays. It's gonna have a very gray color to it. That's why it would be kind of, might be nice to kind of go over with the lime wash because then that'll kind of brighten it up and it might add even more temperature protection. And more weather protection is just another layer on top of that, that any kind of weather has to get through. And it's a lot easier to just paint on some lime wash than apply like a whole nother layer of plaster. So we'll leave our particular mix in the description below for reference for you and uh, give it a try first. Uh, try some small experiments of your own, see how it works for you before starting any kind of large project. Test it out first before you do into something really big. Make sure it works for you, where you're at. But uh, that's what we've been doing. That's been working for us. Obviously the proof is in the pudding. We got a lot of work to do to cover the dome. We got a little bit done, but uh, obviously we have quite a bit more to go. So stay tuned as we continue to work on and build the house. I hope this helps you with your journey with uh, natural lime plaster. Let us know uh, if you try it and how that works for you. All right, y'all, we'll catch you in the next video.